A quick wire brushing takes off the scale that was left on the hammer after heat treating. Not very much scale at all, nowhere near as much as left on after forging. And now we're ready to dress the hammer. Due to popular demand, we're going to go ahead and show these last few steps. We're going to clean up the faces, give them a little bit of a polish. I'll give the hammer a little bit of a wax treatment, makes it look a little bit better, and it also helps protect it from rust. And then I'll put a commercial hammer on the handle. Not much left to do, so it shouldn't be a very long video, but everybody seemed to want to see the very last thing. So we're going to finish the heavier of the two hammers. The lighter hammer that was previously ordered is ordered without a handle, so we won't go that far with it. I've taken the faces of both hammers down to a 220 grit finish. For a general forging hammer, I think 220 is a good finish. If you're doing knife work or something else that requires the best possible finish, go ahead and take it to a finer grit, polish it, have a mirror finished hammer, but you probably don't want to use that for general forging because you'll mess it up really easy. Next thing I want to do is I just want to get it hot enough to melt some wax on it. You don't have to do this. A lot of people put just a little bit of oil on there, a little linseed oil, tongue oil, something like that. It's really just to make the tool look a little bit better and help protect it from rust. So I'll just bring these up to about 250 degrees or so, well below the tempering temperature, so there's no danger of changing the temper of the hammerhead by doing this. Just enough to melt the wax. It should be just warm enough to melt the wax onto it. Perhaps could be a little bit warmer than it is, but it is melting in. For those who have been watching all winter long wondering why doesn't he insulate his shop better, well right here is the reason that my shop isn't insulated as well as I would like it to be. There's a load of snow on the roof and it's melting and unfortunately it's finding a way in around the skylight right above my head. And until those details are fixed I don't want to insulate because it'll just soak the insulation and that'll create even bigger problems. Hopefully this summer I'll be able to hire a roofer and we'll get this done right with all new materials. But that brings us down to the handle for this hammer. Now there are generally two types of handles that you're looking at for shop hammers if you're buying commercially made hammers. If you're making a handle, make the handle you want. But those are blacksmith handles, what a convenient name, and machinist hammer handles. Now the big difference is machinist hammer handles tend to be a little lighter weight. They are sized more for ball peen hammers and things like that than they are for forging hammers. So in most cases I prefer the blacksmith style hand hammer handles. And these come in various lengths and generally when you buy them you get a wedge, a, a wooden wedge and a steel wedge with them. It seems like the wooden wedges are almost always a little bit too small so I'll probably end up cutting my own wedge for that. But let's see if it fits. Well, and it doesn't, which is good. I'd rather have to take a handle down to make it fit than have one that is loose because that doesn't do you any good. But it looks like it's good in the width-wise for this eye. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's about the width of the eye. It's just a little bit too fat. So you can carve this down. If you've got a little draw knife, something like that will work just fine to make this fit. Or you can go to the belt sander.
So now we see how the handle actually fits. There is an up and a down, mostly based on my touch mark here. I want it to face upwards when we're all done. Actually, let's weigh this hammer first, see what it really ended up at. Once the handle's on there, you're weighing the handle too, and that's not really the, the weight that I like to look at. 3 pounds, 14.6 ounces. So it's just a hair under 4 pounds. That's a heavy hammer. So that gets us started there. Take a look and make sure that everything is straight this way. You don't want the handle twisted off to one side. Make sure it looks good in these directions. Lots, lots of room to still work on that because this is a long ways from being actually fit up. In this case, I can take the drift that I used making the hammer. So this tells us where the hammer fits and where the hammer doesn't fit. And anything that is being compressed here or leaves a really bad black mark is where it's too tight. And I tend to go to a sharp knife at this point and just do little bits of adjustments. A spoke shave or draw knife would work, but be careful not to take too much over the draw knife. Spoke shave's real good for this, but I don't have one in the blacksmith shop because I usually do this in the house in the basement wood shop. So just go through and take all the, the rub marks out. Those are the high spots. Leave the low spots. And then you can try it again. Now once this starts to seat up, you don't have to support the head. You let the inertia of the head drive itself up onto the handle. And that works out pretty well. We're still not quite halfway up the, hand, the eye here. So you just keep going the same way. Take off the high spots and leave, leave the low spots alone. At some point we're going to have to deepen this saw cut as well because that's not going to be deep enough. I'd like to get a little bit more wedging action. But every time you fit it, sight down the handle, make sure everything's going on straight. If it's got problems, figure out what it's going to take to fix it. But we're getting much closer. I think I'm going to go finish this up inside where I've got a spoke shave and a knife that's actually meant for whittling type work instead of using the pocket knife I use for opening the mail. This hickory is tough stuff. Let's head into the basement workshop where we can finish this handle. That way we can cut a wood wedge that fits just exactly right instead of using the slightly undersized one that was included with the handle. And I have some tubular metal wedges, which I like better than the flat ones. Well, this is more like it. There's no water dripping in here. And I've got all the tools I might want for doing what is essentially a woodworking project. This was blacksmithing. This is woodworking. Just in case you were wondering. So at this point, I'm still shaving little bits off just to make that last little perfect fit. And this is a much better knife for the job. This is just a very simple straight knife with a flat bevel, referred to as a sloyd knife. 
used in Scandinavian craft traditions and just an excellent wood carving knife. You can take very nice little shavings. You can take great big shavings if you want to. But mostly, right now it's shouldering up here, so I want to get rid of that shoulder so the head can go on all the way. Now I'd also mentioned you could use a spoke shave for this, and this is what a spoke shave is. It's a two-handed instrument you generally pull towards you, which means this needs to be secured somehow. So we'll put this back on and see if it fits. Again, using the inertia of the, the head to drive it up on the handle. Check it for square and straight and all that kind of stuff. Make sure you like the way it's going on there. And that's pretty good there. I need to deepen my saw cut, so I want to put a mark where this comes up in the bottom of the hammer, make sure I don't go beyond that. Then there's also some places where it's starting to form a shoulder again, and I don't want the shoulder. I want it to wedge on tight, not hit a shoulder, because that doesn't, it may not be wedged tightly when it hits the shoulder. So you want a nice taper there. But then we'll deepen that saw cut. So this is a good opportunity to make sure I have a wedge that fits. Boy, that was just really close. Again, I'll just trim it down with a knife. Now somebody out there say, oh, you're cutting towards your thumb, but because I'm doing this, I can't cut my thumb, and my thumb is over here. So, this is not the place to learn these kind of carving techniques, but there are certain safeties that allow you to cut towards yourself and closer to your thumb than you might think you should. That's going to fit just fine. The last thing I want to do is just clean this up a little bit get some of the more ragged knife marks off and I use a cabinet scraper for that which may need to be sharpened. I just want this to go on smoothly. It also gets rid of some of the grubbiness from being in the blacksmith shop. I'll finish scraping the rest of the handle after the head's on. So make sure the touch mark is the way you want it. If you've touch marked it in a way that matters. One last look to make sure everything looks just like you want it. Sometimes I find giving it a little bit of a lip there to work against helps. It looks very good. And my wedge starts nicely. Now I like to put just a little bit of wood glue on the wooden wedge. This does a couple of things for me. One, it guarantees it's not going to fall out later. But two, the glue is kind of slippery at this point, and it helps me drive it in a little bit tighter without it dragging and splitting. And I like to put it down on a little anvil and drive the handle down onto it. That should be all there is to it till that glue dries. And then we'll do just a little bit of trimming on that and put a steel wedge in. sand down the cut edge of this. 
I'm going to try real hard not to scuff up the hammerhead. It doesn't hurt anything, but it just doesn't look good. And the last thing will be to put a steel wedge in it. And I like these tubular wedges. I get these from PayTool. Other people sell a tubular wedge, but these are much nicer. They got a nice sharp lip on them there that really keeps them from falling back out again. Some of the others are so round and smooth on the sides that they uh, tend to fall out in use. Insert that in there and then it's pretty easy to put it back on the little anvil and drive it home. The last two things that I'm going to do to the handle, I'm going to take the card scraper one more time and just clean this up, or maybe a little bit of 220 sandpaper, whatever you want, just to get the grubby fingerprints off. If it was my handle in my shop, I wouldn't worry about that. That's just because this will end up going to somebody else. And yes, somebody has already spoken for this hammer. In fact, two or three people have. And then once I get it cleaned up, I'll put a little bit of tongue oil or linseed oil on it. When that's dry, it's ready to ship out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed the series of videos. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends or on social media. But then, by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop. But be safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.